This is how to build your own secure web app from scratch. I personally recommend this as a great beginner project for anyone who is breaking into cybersecurity or tech in general, since you can learn all the foundations of how to build a web app, how to make sure that web application is secure, how to prevent any vulnerabilities. And since for today's project, we're going to be using a web IDE, which means coding directly from your browser, no need to download any other apps, starting from just a web idea to a fully launched web application. We'll also be covering practical security best practices for web IDEs. And because we live in the era of AI, you don't actually need any coding skills to do this project. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be building a secure web app using AI, and specifically, I'm using Bolt. Your web app can be on any topic, but specifically, I'm going to be focusing on creating a revamped website as a platform to host all of my cybersecurity resources. All right, now I have my laptop, and if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my laptop. But first, I'm going to type in exactly the idea I want to build. So inside the prompt, I'm basically telling it to build a basic website for me to host all of my cybersecurity career resources in one place. After that, Bolt will take this prompt and basically generate me a website based on what I'm asking for. Now, if you're doing this as a cybersecurity project, using AI tools like this to help you learn is a great place to start because then you save hours and hours of time learning how to code. And instead, you can focus your time on how to secure the web application, how to make sure your web IDE is secure, and how to prevent any vulnerabilities. And if you haven't used an AI tool like this, it typically looks something like this, where you have the prompt that you shared, or you can also see your code and the website preview. So already, this <laughs> looks really good, I think. Um, it's also even in my colors that I like. So this already looks very professional. So you can scroll down and see that it already has pre-filled information for you, even a career timeline, how to get in touch, featured projects. In fact, if you're someone who is starting out and don't have any cybersecurity projects yet, this is also a great way to create your own cybersecurity project portfolio that you can then share with recruiters, hiring managers, put it on your LinkedIn or your resume, and of course having this as a project. But wait, you might be asking yourself, Sandra, what exactly is a web IDE and why is it relevant? A web IDE is basically a coding environment that operates entirely within your web browser. This basically makes it so that you can code directly from your browser, Google Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using, and it doesn't need you to download any local software, installations, dependencies, or anything else. It's all managed within your web IDE. Now this makes it really easy for you to be able to spin up apps really quickly because you don't have to worry about the headache of managing different files or folders or applications. And it also makes it very beginner friendly to be able to spin up projects. And it's one of the best ways that I recommend for beginners to build their own websites. There's also a terminal directly within the IDE, which makes it really easy to run your own commands and it really is that simple. And with that, I have a web application with a tool that you can try for free. Now we can focus on the best practices to secure it. I'll be covering four cybersecurity best practices with you to keep your web application secure when you're building on a web IDE. All right, security best practice number one is using secure workflows and sandboxing. So when you're building out an application, you should always use isolated sandboxes to test your code without affecting production. So that basically means if you're testing a new feature, you're doing it in a test environment that doesn't affect anything that you have online. So if something did go wrong, it won't crash the entire site. And instead you can fix it really quickly within the sandbox environment. Most big companies do this. Sometimes companies have multiple sandbox environments for testing before they go to production, especially if you're working in a big company or in a sector that needs to have really good stability, for example, in banking or healthcare. But I've worked in companies where we've had a, a pre-prod environment and a user acceptance environment for both the developers to test, but also for clients and customers to test. So basically a lot of testing to be done before anything goes to production. Another thing is to keep environment variables and secrets outside of your code and make sure you're using secure secret managers even when using your web IDE. So I know a lot of people will make the mistake of just copying and pasting code into a web IDE and that includes their secrets, their tokens, any API keys, any credentials even inside their code and then sharing it directly with an AI tool. This is something that you should never do. All these tokens and secrets should be managed and not just in plain text within your code, within your application somewhere. Because otherwise, I think this goes without saying, this could be easily visible to a potential hacker or a threat actor. And of course, on top of this, you should also limit permissions and follow least privilege for API tokens, for database credentials while you're doing all your testing. And when it comes to securing code inside a web IDE, Bolt makes it easier to build without compromising your security. So what exactly is Bolt? Bolt is a tool that takes you from idea to a fully functional app or website in minutes. No, you don't need to be technical and you also don't need any setup to build your very own app. But as I've also mentioned in this video, one of my biggest concerns using AI coding tools is security, which is why I'm using Bolt to build my app. Bolt's infrastructure gives you secure sandbox environments for your web IDE workflows so you don't have to worry about workspace sprawl or accidentally leaking credentials while you're testing or prototyping. You get a clean, isolated workspace 
every time you spin up a project, which reduces risk by default. You can also get dependency scanning. If you integrate with GitHub and use Dependabot or other security tools in your CI CD pipeline right inside your development workflow. This means that you can catch vulnerable packages and enforce security standards before they ever hit your pipeline. Plus with built-in secrets management, you don't have to hard code API keys or database credentials in your projects. Bolt handles it safely, keeping your secrets out of your code and away from your repos. And when you're ready to ship, secure CI CD pipelines let you deploy confidently without skipping your security checks, all while maintaining the speed you need to move your projects forward. Secure coding doesn't stop at your editor. By using sandboxing, safe dependency practices, and secure deployment workflows, you reduce your attack surface while keeping your development workflow fast and efficient. If you're coding inside a web IDE, take a moment to review your security practices. Your future self will thank you. And if you want to turn your idea into something real, just go to bolt.new or through the link in my description and get six months free on their annual plan using code Sandra Bolt. Thank you to Bolt for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. All right, security best practice number two for building web applications is safe dependency management. This means avoid using unverified dependencies and checking for known CVEs or vulnerabilities using tools like NPM audit, PIP audit, or if you're using Bolt, it implements features following security best practices by default. I've noticed when I use other AI coding tools that aren't as advanced, you'll find that a lot of the times their code already has built-in vulnerabilities in them. And then you have to backtrack and do the code scan, making sure all the dependencies are actually secure based on whatever packages that they're using. Because let's face it, most AI coding tools don't have security inherently built in. They're just building out a web app and not necessarily thinking about it from a security perspective. But if you're a cybersecurity professional, then this is even more important. If you're using AI coding tools, I personally do not recommend using a random free one online, especially knowing that a lot of times the code will have inherent vulnerabilities in them. And trust me, this already makes your life 10 times easier down the line because you don't have all those vulnerabilities that you have to end up fixing yourself. You can also pin dependency versions to prevent any supply chain attacks and make sure that you're using trusted tools to track any dependencies that you're using, even when you're just starting development. Security best practice number three is having a secure deployment pipeline. So this is actually an area that I used to work in when I was working as a security analyst in my last job. I was the one responsible for setting up our secure SDLC, making sure that all the code that went to production was tested, went through code scans, didn't have any security vulnerabilities, and were properly following our SLA or, or basically our timeline to remediate any vulnerabilities that did come up from any code scans or vulnerability scans that we were doing. Now, this is very relevant in your CI CD pipelines, which stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery. And it's essentially the steps or the process that takes your code into production. You can use SAS and DAS coding tools. There are a bunch of them online that are open source. Dependabot is also an easy one to get started with if you're using GitHub. And it has a lot of integrations with different tools and so that you can also build out a little vulnerability reporting dashboard if you wanted to, which by the way is another great cybersecurity project to work on if you're trying to get more projects onto your resume. Make sure you're using CI CD pipelines integrated with your web IDE so that you can automate any security checks before you're deploying to production. Secret scanning is another important one. This basically checks your code for any secrets tokens, API keys, anything that looks like a credential or a password and brings it to your attention so that it can be managed properly. Again, no hard-coded secrets or passwords or API keys or tokens in your code. This is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make as someone who is working in tech. And of course, making sure that you're deploying to a staging environment first. This, like I mentioned before, is when users or clients will go on the app and test any new features. And of course, using canary deployments and monitoring, which lets you release a new version of an application to a small set of users before it gets rolled out to the entire user base in case there are any small bugs or glitches that might've been missed. There's definitely a lot to think about when you're thinking about secure deployment, whether you're working from a web IDE or not. And last but not least, the security best practice number four on this list is is to make sure that you're securing your database integrations. Even if you're just breaking into cybersecurity, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of SQL injections. The best ways to prevent this from happening is to use parameterized queries or ORM safe methods to prevent the SQL injections altogether, even during prototyping. And this is what I mean by having security built in right from the beginning of development. This should not be an afterthought. It should not be when the security team comes and finds the vulnerabilities through different code scans and come to find out there are very basic vulnerabilities that could have been prevented if it was properly managed and at least had security inherently built in while the application was being planned and built rather than as an afterthought. And of course, to never use any database credentials hard-coded inside your code or inside your web IDE or any IDE that you're using for that matter. Make sure that you're also always using a secure network connection and restricting database access by IP. For example, someone working from home should not be able 
able to access a production database from wherever they are. Unless of course there are already security measures in place like a workplace VPN and other factors of authentication to prove that that person is actually legitimate. And this includes even when you're just testing. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful in helping you build out a web application. As you can see, it is pretty easy nowadays with an AI tool. And again, you can get six months free on their annual plan using my code Sandra Bolt. It's a really great way to build out your own websites and web applications while also knowing that they are secure by default. And hopefully this also helped you in understanding how to secure your own web applications from when you're just planning it out to database security to deployments. And of course, while using a web IDE. Don't forget to check out Bolt and try it for free using the link in my description. You can also check out the first video in the series where I teach you how to build a cybersecurity home lab for free using open source tools. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly. Don't forget to also stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram, also all linked in my description. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.